Gotta go places, gotta see things. See new places and brand new things. Gotta go places and do things. Maybe to forget it. What is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony today we are in the new 2019 subaru forester per your request because i always like making you guys happy so as always you guys let's start with pricing and so there will be several different trim levels available for the 2019 forester first one being the base that one is going to start at twenty four thousand two hundred ninety five dollars then you have the premium for twenty six thousand six hundred ninety five the sport which is the one we have today that one starts at twenty eight thousand seven hundred ninety five dollars limited starts at thirty thousand seven ninety five and the touring for thirty four thousand two hundred ninety five dollars and so but regardless of trim level the power plant on the 2019 forester will actually be the same this year let me explain powering this one is going to be a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed Subaru boxer engine there is no turbocharged engine setup available for this year that is one of the new changes but power comes in at 182 horsepower at 5800 rpm 176 pound-feet of torque available at 4400 rpm power is going to be sent of course to all four wheels through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system and that power is sent to the ground through a linear tronic CVT and not Another new change for this year, there is no manual transmission available for any of the trim levels for the 2019 Forester. But with that CVT, MPG numbers are going to come in at approximately 26 in the city, 33 on the highway using regular unleaded fuel being 87 octane. And there is an auto start stop system that contributes to that better fuel economy as well, of course. But before we do any kind of accelerations in this one, there are some driving modes available through Subaru's what they call an SI drive. And those driving modes include Sport, Sport Sharp, and Intelligent. And in the case of the Forester, they are actually located on the steering wheel. And they will adjust things like the shift point and the throttle response so what do you say let's put it in that sport sharp driving mode let's test out the paddle shifters and the acceleration on this one and by the way paddle shifters if you're looking for them come on the sport and the touring trim level so since we have the sport we do of course have them so let's do a quick little acceleration and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2019 Forester here up to speed So, not the quickest acceleration. Paddle shifters actually weren't all that bad. It did react pretty quickly. Even though it's a CVT, still kind of cool that the paddle shifters are there. But in my humble opinion, I certainly wouldn't have minded that turbocharged engine setup for this year. But in the end, Subaru probably pulled it because most people are going with the more fuel-efficient engine setup, which is, again, the one that is offered for the 2019 Forester. But so then to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so an interesting fact for you guys, braking will actually differ depending on the trim level that you go with for instance base trim level and premium trims are going to give you 11.6 inch ventilated front discs 11.2 inch solid rear discs however if you went with the sport limited or touring trim levels those are going to give you 12.4 inch ventilated front discs and 11.2 inch ventilated rear discs so actually a larger braking setup so a little better braking if you go with the sport trim level and up so let's do a quick little braking test here Wow, definitely no issues there. Braking feel is excellent. And then to touch on the handling and suspension on the 2019 Forester, you will find a four wheel independent suspension with front and rear stabilizer bars. And there's actually active torque vectoring as well, which is gonna increase your cornering abilities. And as far as the steering feel goes, it is as expected for the Forester, not too heavy, not too light. So I'd say it's right on point for this one. As far as ride quality goes, I've had no issues so far, but then again, I've been on pretty smooth roads so far, but definitely no issues there. But so then in another thing I have to mention with this being a Subaru with the best all-wheel drive system out there is there is a system called X mode that Subaru has giving you some off-road driving modes including of course normal but also snow and dirt and deep snow and mud and that's essentially just going to help send torque to the wheels to have the most traction helping you of course better push through any kind of rough situation that you were in and again when you pair that with Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive system you should definitely have no issues with going off-road in this one and when it comes to cabin noise I am getting some wind noise coming into the cabin it's really not all that bad but it is there but touching on visibility visibility is definitely where it's at with the Forester I can see perfectly fine and due to its shape you're definitely not gonna have any issues really no blind zones when it comes to the Subaru Forester but so now enough with the driving dynamics you guys let's check out the exterior of this redesigned 2019 
Subaru Forester. And so to start up front, you will first see orange front bumper accents just because we have the sport trim level. That is gonna be exclusive to this trim level we have today. To the sides, LED headlights will actually come standard on every single trim level, that's definitely nice. Steering responsive headlights are gonna be found on the limited and touring trims. And if you go with the sport trim level and up, you will actually have fog lights just below there as well. Then make your way to the sides, raised roof rails will come with the premium trim level and up, as well as rear privacy glass for those trims. And there are orange accented side skirts, again, specific to the sport trim level we have today. Then take a look at the side mirrors, there will be a black finish for the base trim level, body colored finish for the premium trim level and up, and you will actually get integrated turn signals with the sport trim level and up there. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 17 by 7 inch steel wheels will come with the base, 17 by 7 inch aluminum alloy wheels will come with the premium and you will get bumped up to 18 by 7 inch aluminum alloy wheels if you go with the sport touring or limited trim levels but make your way to the back on this one integrated rear brake light will come standard on every single trim level a rear spoiler will come with that integrated brake light if you go with the premium and up and there is a rear window wiper for every single trim level and just below it all single exhaust outlet so you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So, but now since we are round back to open that rear lift gate, there actually is a button on the key fob, so simply press that if you like, but it is actually a power lift gate if you go with the limited or touring trim levels. For the other trims, it's gonna simply just unlock that rear lift gate, but once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 35.4 cubic feet for the base. However, that is tailored down a little bit for every other trim level, pushing it down to an even 33 cubic feet. But if that was not enough space and you did not have any rear passengers, simply fold down those rear seats that is going to bump it up to 70.9 cubic feet. Also did want to mention for every single trim level, there is some cargo area under floor storage, which is definitely convenient, as well as grocery bag and tie down hooks back there. That's pretty cool. But premium trim level and up is also going to give you a removable cargo tray area back there. But making our way to the rear leg room, that is going to come in at 39.4 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. If you want a rear ventilation, that is going to come with the sport limited and touring trim levels. And there are second row USB ports again for the sport trim level and up and a rear center armrest with cup holders for the premium trim level and up and heated rear seats if you went with the touring. Then make your way to the front. There are manually adjustable cloth seats with the base 10 way power adjustable driver seat for the premium trim level and up. And if you went with the sport trim level and up, they are going to be heated front seats as well. Then take a look up front. There is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It will come leather wrapped for premium trim levels and up. And it will be heated if you went with the touring. But now let's get to the startup on this one. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You will find lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear hatch. And by the way, the unlock button is the Subaru logo in the middle there. It's pretty cool but it is all actually keyless access with a push button start if you go with the sport trim level and up. So all I'm going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. But once started up, tachometer is going to be on your left, speedometer is on your right. Those gauges will do a full sweep and they will be accented in orange again because we have the sport trim level today. But towards the bottom, you will find your trip information. Towards the top, you're going to find your average MPGs in any given time. And then there is a digital speed readout in the center there. But now let's make our way to overall interior quality. Dual zone climate control will come with the limited and touring trim levels. Panoramic power moonroof is going to be standard on the premium trim level and up. That is letting in so much more light today. I gotta love it. And there's gonna be a ton of orange accents that you're looking at right now because we have the sport trim level today. Also did wanna mention there are home light controls available for up to three different garage doors. And just above the tech display that I'm about to go over, there is another tech display that actually goes through a good bit, including the day of the week, the date, outside temperature. And there is a ton of different things you could scroll through up there as well. But like I said, let's make our way to the tech display on this one. 6.5 inch colored touchscreen display will come with the base trim level, premium and sport therefore that is what you are actually looking at right now but if you want with the limited or touring trim levels that is going to bump that size up to an eight inch color touchscreen display either way though you will get bluetooth and audio streaming android auto and apple carplay again standard for every trim level that's definitely nice factory navigation system is going to come with the touring trim and you can of course check out your radio settings as well up there and by the way when it comes to the sound system bass trim level is going to give you four speakers premium sport and limited are going to give you 
you six speakers, and that touring trim level is actually going to give you a nine speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 576 watts, which is not the one we have today. We do have the sport trim level, therefore we do have the six speakers, so you guys know what we have to do next. Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> ton of loudness. Bass is as expected. Definitely not too much bass, but the loudness is definitely there, especially for the size of the Forester. So pretty nice sound system for six speakers. But so the last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Forester in reverse, you will have a rear view camera for every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead me into safety. And so there will be front side and side curtain airbags, also up front a driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to find latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also rear child door locks back there a tire pressure monitoring system will come standard also standard for every single trim level actually is subaru eyesight if you're not familiar with that what that is going to give you is adaptive cruise control a pre-collision braking system lane departure and sway warning as well as lane keep assist and there is additional safety features as well depending on the trim level that you go with for instance the sport trim level and up is going to add high beam assist limited and touring is going to give you a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert and by the way that is actually optional on the premium and sport if you wanted it on one of those trim levels and there is a reverse automatic braking again standard with the touring but optional on the sport and limited trim levels and so but anyways that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching be sure to like the video and subscribe feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there and i will see you guys in the next video stay gold <laughs>